It's really awesome to be with you all here today. Uh, this, I think, is only my first time in Seattle, so I'm really excited. All right. Um, so my talk says that we're going to talk about mapping the world's knowledge. And this is sort of true. But really what I'm here to talk about is the theme of building community, since that's what you're all here to talk about today. Aha. Um, sorry, some technical difficulties. Do I have a mouse? I do have a mouse. All right. What's that? Definitely not. It's how we get break the ice, right? So when I was asked to come here today, I was asked to talk a little bit about, um, about community and perhaps some of the similarities and things that we could learn from each other as communities. Wikimedia has been around since 2001. We're just a little bit older than OpenStreetMaps, but you guys are also a large, robust community, and we do share many similarities as well as differences. I wanted to know what was the community looking for here today? What was it that you wanted to hear? And what I really heard was like, how do, we, how do we think about our future? What is it that we can learn from each other? How can we maybe collaborate going forward? And so those are some of the things that I want to talk about, is like, what are the things that we have learned about building communities? And what are the things that we might think about for you that are also probably valuable as you continue to grow and scale? I wanted to understand, when was the first time I really knew about OpenStreetMaps? Like, when did it come into my life? And I went back into my emails, because that's kind of like my record and archive these days. And I found that the very first time I ever heard about OpenStreetMaps was the 19th of June, 2008. I had received an email that was forwarded to me from a colleague, and it was a pretty great email. Uh, you may recognize the sender. Um, <laughs> My name is Steve. I've created this little thing. It's called OpenStreetMaps. It's kind of like Wikipedia for maps. As you can see, there are obviously two things that I really love about this. The first is Wikipedia for maps. I swear I, this is really in my inbox. I didn't make this up. Um, the second thing is there's going to be beer. And if there's one thing that I have learned about open source communities and open source platforms is that they are primarily built on beer. It is not just about free as in beer. It is also about beer. So <laughs> I followed some of the links back to figure out what exactly this email was really about. And I got even happier. Um, because I found a broken wiki. Um, <laughs> this was originally the very first meetup that happened in New York, is my understanding. And now, today, it's a really robust page. It describes the OpenStreetMaps community's activities in New York. There's lots of information. But at the time, it was just a meetup. And what I loved about the details, in the Wikimedia community, we would refer to this as um, eventualism. It's kind of like, we're going to do a thing. More info coming soon. Somebody else will help us get this to where it needs to be to the place where we have all the information that we need and uh, really to make, this, to make this sort of what we want. Um, it also reminds me of the power of our movements. We're now mature movements. We have these incredible platforms. We also have our, an incredible history behind us, which can be a little crufty at times. I think that syntax is broken. That might be our fault. Um, <laughs> but this was really my introduction to, to the OpenStreetMaps community. And, and over time, I have been not a mapper myself, but have spent a lot of time with members of your community, working in different organizations that have been focused, as you heard earlier from our first speaker, um, about how we can use mapping in terms of supporting humanitarian efforts, improving global uh, development and human health indicators, but also some other more practical um, more practical applications uh, around how do we use it for civic participation and how does this integrate so that like commercial services can build off these platforms. Um, and so even though I have not been a mapper myself, I've really been excited to try all of the th different things that I've learned through the mapping community. And what I'm really thrilled about is that at the Wikimedia Foundation, we're getting closer and closer to the community that you're in. And so we're looking more and more at what we can do with some of the uh, platforms and, and uh, data sets and everything else that you have built. So, as I said, that, that was then, right? Um, this is from our free media repository. Uh, and this is now, right? We, Wikimedia is 80, I think we have 80,000 active contributors a month. We're visited by about half a billion people every month. We're an encyclopedia. We're rich, we have rich structured data. We're more than just an encyclopedia. We have rich structured data. We have rich media. We have an original source project called Wikisource. And we're available in 290 and more languages. 
And you are also a more mature community. You've got more than 35,000 active contributors a month. You've got more than 5 million uploaded points, GPS points, thousands of services and applications running on OSM. Um, and of course, uh, you're used everywhere around the world. And that's, of course, where we are today. And you might, I think one of the things that the conference organizers talked to me a little bit about is that you might be asking yourselves a bit about where do we go from here? You know, we started with these incredible ideas, map the world, you know, just a small thing, map all of human knowledge, just a small thing. Um, we've kind of done a lot of that. And so what are the challenges that we're facing going forward? Like how do we scale financially, operationally? I was looking a little bit at the uh, server fundraiser from last year in preparing for this talk. These are real questions. What do we think about in terms of our global distribution? How do we scale our communities? How do we scale our mission? What comes next? And we are asking ourselves these questions too as Wikimedians. In fact, we're just launching uh, we have, are in the process of launching a big strategy consultation to understand where it is that we go in the year to come. And so if any of you in the room are Wikimedians, I'm going to make a plug that you participate. Um, but the really critical thing is we don't have answers. It is part of an open dialogue and conversation. One of the things that we do know, however, is that it starts with community because community is where we have all started. Um, we have to have conversations in order to figure this out. And investing in community is the first place that we start. So how do you invest in community? Our communities, you know, uh, I was reading a little bit about the difference between our communities and preparing this talk, and I, I loved it. Uh, I was reading the Welcome to Wikipedia page on the OpenStreetMaps wiki, and I learned a couple things. Uh, your community is completely down with surveying trees, individual trees. Our community believes that a tree must have a couple citations from a reliable source. <laughs> What is a tree? Great question. <laughs> Epistemology. There are a lot of those uh, discussions on Wikipedia. We are primarily built with the support of many individuals. Your community is a little bit different. You have many institutional and organizational partners as well. As well. But we're also quite similar. We're part of a powerful open movement. And openness is kind of up to us to define, right? Different people have different perspectives on what it is. It might be our standards, it might be our platforms, it might be our values. For me, it's what open is what allows us to be everywhere, to build cool stuff, and to represent the world around us. It's what brings my skills and your skills together and allows us to leave the table with something that is greater than the sum of our parts. It is really, truly at the core of who we are. It is not just our product and our platform, but it is also our promise. So how do we build off that? Well, I think it's kind of simple. We make friends. Um, what I mean by this is finding our allies and partners within our movement and across movements. That's why I'm here today speaking with you. That's why some of my colleagues from the foundation are speaking with you. Finding our allies and partners isn't just about feeling good. It's about creating a shared space for our community so that we can be more powerful together. And I mean this in really practical ways. It's about sharing financial and infrastructure resources so that we don't have the same, we don't have to each have our own overhead. It's about meeting and engaging with like-minded people so we are stronger together. It's about growing networks and strengthening support and access to resources. It's about raising awareness in our communities and, our gen and among the general public of what it is that we do so that they're hearing one story about openness and participation that's really clear and understandable and gives them a place to engage and say that they want to join. It's about coordinating around affecting policy and standards that affects the work that we do and the way that we do it. And I'm excited to say that you may recognize some of these faces, um, that this is happening in a really practical way right now. Uh, we had our annual conference for the Wikimedia movement last month in Asino Lario in Italy, which is this beautiful little village um, up above Lake Como. I'm sure that there's lots of shape files for it. Um, and in fact, I know that there are. Um, and the reason I mention this is that we were hosted by Wikimedia Italia. And Wikimedia Italia, as it turns out, is also the OpenStreetMaps chapter for Italy, and one of the only OpenStreetMaps chapters in the world. Um, they have a common membership base where people actually join them as members. And they have a shared free knowledge mission. And they run projects and get-togethers together. Uh, I think that they are the first shared chapter in either of our, um, in either of our movements or histories. This is a photo of, of the signing of the agreement, I believe. And they do really cool stuff together. And from my perspective, that is not just, you know, it is about those shared resources. They have a shared space. They, they have a shared um, 
uh, access to networks, but they also do cool things. So this is an example of a project that they launched around, or built around mapping Wikipedia articles that can be mapped in OpenStreetMaps. And if you sort of drill down a little bit closer, you can see that you can actually navigate individual points, and that's actually a link to see the article on Wikipedia, which is about a church uh, right near the Colosseum. This is what we would call a stub article, so if any of you guys want to improve it and know Italian, or if any of you are photographers and want to add an image to commons, um, just a little call to action there. And actually a bigger call to action, because I think like, like Wikimedians, mappers view a open map as a challenge. Um, as you can see, this has only happened in Italy so far. And this is an example of, there's a lot of blank space out there, right? There's a lot of mapping to do. We have 25 million articles. This is an invitation to all of you. Um, this is an example of what we can actually do when we think about how do we render and share information and share knowledge. So uh, the code's all up on GitHub. If, you any, if any of you have questions, I'm happy to to share that with you later, but um, Simone Cortesi, who is one of our cha chair, uh, excuse me, board members in Wikimedia is also a known person within your community, so you can also reach out to him. It's also, it's not just about finding our friends and allies, it's about being inclusive and being inclusive structurally. And what do I mean by this? This is a big one. It means opening your communities to people who may be from different backgrounds, who may not look like you. Wikimedia is, I should actually in many ways be the last person standing up here to talk about this. Wikimedia has many and well-documented challenges in this space. But because we have long struggled with it, we've also learned a lot. We want to reflect the world around us and yet our community doesn't. Uh, we've gotten really good at documenting things that fall within the canon, but not necessarily outside of it. But our mission is all the world's knowledge, just in the same way that you're here to map and survey the built world and, and the natural world around you and provide that information and make that a platform for people. So how do we do that if we're not actually truly representative in our communities of all of the people who live in this space, who create this knowledge? It's a challenge. As we all know, local knowledge is global knowledge. The local knowledge that is available to, you know, that I don't know about a community in Tanzania is really important knowledge, not just that to that community, but also to our shared cultural heritage and in, in the world. It's more important than ever. You heard Bill Gates speaking about that before. Um, so how do we actually create those spaces that are important? Well, some of the things that we have learned are to do active outreach and to listen. What I mean by this is to identify the people and communities you want to work with. It's not just enough to invite them in and say, hey, we're here and we'd like you to join us. If there are people who are not participating in your community and movement, it's, the onus is actually on us to go out and understand why. What are, why are they not working with us yet? What are their challenges? What are their fears? What are their objections? And then to, uh, for us to listen to them and to find ways to incorporate those challenges and, and fears into the way that we do our work and actually create a bigger tent in a place that is more inclusive in response to these challenges. For us, for example, we um, measure in terms of, we have a grant making program that provides resources and one of the things that we measure by is active contributors. Active contributors for us are defined as five contrib contributions a month. We have a community in Ghana that is nascent, it's growing, our contributors there come to an edit-a-thon once a month, they get together and they add content to Wikipedia. The same people come in month in and month out, but they only come once a month, so they are only making perhaps one contribution a month. Are they active? Absolutely, they are active advocates for our movement, but the way that we were measuring activity was excluding them. So we had to listen to what it was, that the challenges that they faced and start thinking about how we could be more inclusive. Because by excluding them and their activity and their passion and their commitment, we were also excluding them from the resources that they needed to continue to grow and thrive. And those measure, the measurements themselves were depriving our community of growth and the diversity that it needs. Which gets me to my next point, allocate resources. As I said, it's not just enough to be like, we're open and we want more people to come. It requires time and it requires money and it requires commitment and hard structural commitment. Diverse inclusive communities don't just happen because you want to, want them to. You, as I was saying, 
For us, what we have actually looked at and what we've learned is that, uh, I mentioned we're a grant-making institution, we give about 10% of our budget back to the community, our annual foundation budget back to our communities through grants every single year. And what we had to do was to say, we need to set aside resources to actually invest in the growth of these communities. Over the last year and a half, we've set aside half a million dollars dedicated to including, increasing gender diversity in our community and on the platforms themselves and around addressing toxic and other issues of behavior in our communities. Hopefully that's not a challenge that you face in the same way we do. It's, I think, a source of, of um, honestly, embarrassment to many members of our community that that is the way our community is, but we can't address it by saying that we want to change it unless we allocate the resources to change it. And that's not just money, it's engineers, it's community managers, and the like. Now that's for us, we're a different model. Um, I know that we're a centralized model, you're a very decentralized model, but hopefully these are things that you can learn and adapt and take away, and you'll find valuable to your planning and to the way that you do your work. The, as I mentioned, the other thing that we have done is um, allocate resources in terms of community management. We said we wanted to work with our Ghanaian community. I mentioned them earlier. We actually now have someone who's dedicated to working with emerging communities. So that individual is the first person that our Ghanaian community members can talk to and say, look, we've got a problem. You can be our advocate. That's, that's part of your role. How do we negotiate the system? How do we bring our voices to the table? And setting clear expectations. I mentioned toxic behavior and um, unwelcoming environments. When you say to diverse communities that you want them to join, it's not just about creating clear expectations for those communities that you want them there and allocating the resources for them to be there. It's also about setting clear expectations within your own community as a community, through, whether it's through consensus or through other models, that it's not that it, you are going to welcome these people. For us, that has meant, and we are struggling with this, I am gonna be the first person to say this, that has meant implementing friendly spaces policies, not just in our physical spaces, at our conferences, but also online in some of our hosted spaces. And it has meant working towards a code of conduct for how people actually engage in our technical communities. Because as I said, it's not just enough to invite people in. You have to make sure that when they're there, they know what recourse and resources they have in order to truly um, be able to be full participants within that community. And finally, and this is one that you already know, but I just I have to say it because it's totally true, is connecting globally and locally. It's getting together in spaces like this and it's empowering your regional networks and resources to get together as well and finding ways to bring those different communities so that they can learn and share from each other. We know that for different communities that having that sense of social space is a form of legitimization and it helps them feel welcome and engage and become really truly um, participants and members of your community. And then the, la the, the next thing I want to talk about is letting people build. Um, I think this is something that you guys are great at as a community as far as, as I'm aware. Experimentation is what, where we came from, right? It was this idea that we could create a map of the world. It's this idea that we could build an encyclopedia. Um, it's what allows our communities to thrive and it's what brings new people in. We don't build it so that they will come. We build the infrastructure and the services and the resources so that they will build. And building in this case means content, it means technical contributions, it means community, it means applications or services, it means whatever you want it to mean. Um, and so how do you structure this in a way that is appealing and sustainable? I, you know, as I said, I'm here to talk a little bit about what we've learned and what works for us. We've not always, we've had really inconsistent approaches to this in the past. We've tried to build everything ourselves and centralize it. That doesn't work very well. Um, and so one of the things that we've started experimenting with is how can we become more of a platform for our contributors? How do we clarify, for example, our APIs and documentation and service platforms so that people can really build off of them? How do we build support spaces for experimentation? We have a project called Wikimedia Labs, which is allowed, which is designed to allow community members to build things and experiment in a hosted environment environment where they've got the resources to keep things running. We now have a team around technical collaboration that allows community members to say, here is this really gnarly project or issue that I've been dealing with. Could we get a little bit of your time and resources to help address it? And really what we found is it's the volunteer collaboration that makes things successful. It's about having owners in our community and in our organization to really drive things forward. And we're finding that it makes people excited and it brings them in and it makes them want to contribute more because we're providing the resources 
to actually ensure that the contributions that they make are valued and deployable, which I know is really critical. So what does that mean in terms of practice? Well, I mean, it's pretty cool. Um, this is an example of a Wikidata integration with OpenStreetMaps that I believe runs off our Wikidata query service. Wikidata is our structured data project. If you're not familiar with it, it's awesome. Please do familiarize yourself, it's super cool. It's a structured resource for a lot of the knowledge that's contained within the Wikimedia projects and more. Um, and this runs off an integration with Wikidata Query Service which allows people to query the Wikidata database in order to be able to build more complex um, applications on top of all of that knowledge beyond just the unstructured knowledge that's contained within an encyclopedia. From my perspective, this is the future of the way that we build knowledge and I can't tell you how excited I am. This is a community project, that's what makes it awesome. Um, and we have been building out the platforms and infrastructure to continue to support it. Uh, another one is Wikimedia Maps. So this is a little bit different. We've been building this internally within the foundation based on the OpenStreetMaps platform. We're super excited about it. We've rolled it out on Wikivoyage, which is our open uh, travel project. And we know that there's more to come. It's on some Wikipedias. We're looking to get it to all of those Wikipedias. Um, and what I mean about build it and they will come is the team has been building this, essentially this, uh, this service layer for mapping so that once it goes live on Wikipedia, so people can think about all the different ways that they actually want to render information in individual Wikipedia articles. Who knows, maybe someday every Wikipedia article will have some form of geo-information associated with it. Here's a pretty specific example of Wiki Voyage um, with a map of Russia adding layers of understanding and contextual information. I just want to pause and do a totally shameless plug. The people who have been building all of this are in the audience today and they really want to work with you. Do you guys mean raising your hands or like standing up? So if you think any of this is cool, please say hi to. <laughs> If you think this is cool, and I think this is cool, please do say hi to Yuri and to Max and Julian and probably some other folks that are not sitting right in front of me at the moment um, because they are here and they want to answer your questions and they want to figure out how to make this work. Oh, and Katie, what's up? <laughs> um, we want to do a lot more of this. And then the last thing I want to say is around building communities is I've said, all right, it's about building things, it's about creating inclusion. Um, it's also about care and patience. And I mean care and patience for yourself as well. This stuff is hard, particularly the conversation around inclusion and creating more diverse communities, that's really hard. And so being aware that it is also okay to say, hey, you know, this is hard, this is a project, this is work in the same way that you know, building an, a service layer is work, to be able to step back and give yourself that space and a little bit of that self-care. We have tried hundreds of different strategies to build communities. Hundreds have failed. <laughs> um, we have, what we have learned over time is that it, successful outreach to communities requires ongoing dialogue with the local communities that we're trying to reach. There are no solutions that are easy. There are no solutions that fit everyone. There are no solutions that work for all languages. So empowering our volunteers and developers that in order to make sure that they are most successful with their efforts locally has historically been the most successful approach. It has to be custom, it has to be tailored, but what that means is it requires patience, it requires understanding, and it requires respect, not just for the communities that you're working with, but also for your own resources and sense of self. So take care of yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sharks, if they don't move, they die. Um, <laughs> so um, I really want to speak a little bit about finding direction because I mentioned this at the beginning. We're sort of at this place where we're mature movements and we want to find direction. And I said, invest in your communities because that's the way to do it. But there's this other thing that I want to talk about, which is about experimentation. Because it is really important that as we think about moving forward, and I might just be telling this to the Wikimedians in the audience, that we don't worry too much about getting stuck on what the right next move is. We have to keep moving and we have to keep experimenting and small experimentation is often the best way forward. It's easy to get hung up on the specifics of structure and architecture and partnership and how do we think about what central entities do and what they don't do and what's an organization aligned with our movement and what's not and how do we think about trademark and brand and revenue and operations and scaling and server infrastructure. Whoa. <laughs> 
to the point where you paralyze yourself around thinking about what do we really do to take this thing that we love so passionately and make it available to more people and make sure that it lives for, you know, in perpetuity in the world. It can be overwhelming. So it's about keeping moving and experimenting and doing small things because they're all of the things that we do in the spirit of our platforms are things that we can renegotiate. You know, our mistakes will always be there. They'll be in our diff history. Like that's okay, right? We can go back, we can look at them, we can learn from them, but we can build on them. And so keep moving, that is my recommendation. Above all, experimentation. Try a new model and see how it fits. The revision will always be there but you can always change it. You know, together we are here, okay, I can move away from my slides now. We are here to map for the world, right? Whether that means the physical built layer, whether that means the world's knowledge, whether that means all of the different languages, whether that means building awesome repositories and libraries that other people can build on, that's why we're here. It's what brings us together. It's what brings, it's what our values are around. It's where our passion lies. It's why you have all traveled to Seattle or traveled from your homes. It's why you got up so early this morning. And man, it was early, believe me. But if we care so passionately, we have to invite the whole world to also participate. It means we have to expand our communities. It means we have to find new ways of becoming sustainable because us alone in this room, we can't do it together. So let's build our communities. Let's go out and find new participants. Let's find new ways for them to participate, new modes of interaction, and build cooler stuff. And let's do it together, and let's invite everyone in. Thank you so much.